Good day. Welcome to the APSA Art Hotspot. I'm Dr. Paul Bayless, APSA Senior Specialist Art Curator. This morning, we're going to be joined by Pauline Hutter, a painter and intermediate artist, and our 2013 APSA Latelier winner. Many of you are probably familiar with who Pauline Hutter is and her work, but maybe just as a, a recap, she's a Free State-based South African painter and intermediate artist. She was born in 1980 and obtained a BA degree in Fine Arts, and she obtained it cum laude in painting. She was also awarded Honours Colours in Arts and Culture from the Free State University in Bloemfontein. She is a winner of the 2013 Absolatelier competition, but was also awarded the Hellgate Stain Award for painting in 2011. In 2012, she received the Mail and Guardian 200 Young South Africans Award. Pauline Schutter's work is also included in numerous private collections, in museums, and in corporate collections, including the APSA corporate collection. Pauline, welcome. How are you today? I'm good. The wind is blowing, so tomorrow, this morning, we yeah, <laughs> we prepared the firefighters because it's now the grass is burning and stuff. So, yeah, working. Fantastic. And maybe just to for our viewers, just um, give us a bit of detail where you're actually at, uh, because you you on your farm just outside Bloemfontein. Yeah, I'm currently based here, but I'm also um, traveling a lot and. Um, visual research, and I sometimes work in field as well. So, um, Pauline, thank you really for joining us um, today. And you're going to be sharing uh, with us a bit of your journey since winning the Absolute Atelier in 2013 and what you've been up to. I know um, myself, like many others, have been watching your career just really go from one highlight to the next. And it's, you know, it's been, a, as an art curator, it's really been a humbling experience to have been part of that journey with you and to share in, be able to share in some of the highlights. But I mean, that's, I'd like us to just, you, you know, take a bit, a uh, step back and actually just reflect on, on the journey over the last few years and, um, and what, you've, what you've been up to and what the future is going to be holding. My journey with the Absolute Lear didn't start like when I was winning it um, because I was eight times a finalist before um, I, I won it. Um, and how it started was um, when at, at the university, um, the Free State is, is, is a very, um, how can I say, marginalized place. Um, it's only now that it's, it's coming more to the fore with the Free State um, uh, Art Collective with Corin Bruch moving here. Um, from Joburg, and she really established a very um, strong network of artists and helping them to connect. Because, uh, you know, like when you finish um, university, um, it's very difficult for artists to, 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 to start off because you don't get it teach at the university. But I remember when I was a student, um, there was always a poster in the faculty of um, going to Paris and Afsa always like have this amazing and mm. um, so it, it, it just really it just really a dream I mean like in those years um, we could enter the new signatures um, and the PPC uh, awards but I mean it was you, you needed to, to career your works there or you have to drive it there and it was really like um, you can kind of say you make the, the best of, of what you had so um, so it was the to make it different, the apps, are, the apps are, um, had different selection points. So um, it was it, it was an opportunity that the free state um, that APSA gave the free, the free state artists. But you said you entered it eight times before winning it. So I mean, talk us a bit through that because there must have been a few highs and lows, you know. Um, and what kept you sort of motivated to keep throwing your hat in hat in that ring? I don't know, it was just, um, you know, when you set your mind to it, um, it really looked amazing to spend six months in Paris. And um, so, so it was a motivation. Um, uh, and of course, um, competitions doesn't make your career. I mean, but um, again, it gives you opportunities for um, more things to come. So. So I started, the, the first work I did was um, my third year 
it was a big installation of um, uh, what is it? Just, just targets, and then I, the second was a video, a video art and paintings. And um, I think what really motivated me in my fourth year, um, Absa actually bought um, my painting at the exhibition. I didn't won anything, or I wasn't on, in the top ten. But I think that was for me a big, big motivation in my career at that stage. And it was also a thing of like, just keep doing what you do. Because um, art is not, it's like, it's, it's, it's like farming. You have to be patient and especially mm. the process that you follow and painterly. Um, that's why I think my, my work also is a metaphor. The way I work is a metaphor for hand work um, because people um, uh, it's it's a, it's a skill that is dying out but you also you also and as I when I introduced you I uh, introduced you as a painter and as an intermediate um, artist I mean you you you've, you your work covers and over the years has covered a number of different um, mediums yes I think it's because um, of, of my background of lots of diversity. Um, my mother was a very strong um, ballet. She was a ballet teacher and a primary school teacher. And of course, um, we had to do everything. It was a small town. I, I first went to school in Winberg and then in my high school, I went to Bramford. Um, so, so when you're in a small school, um, I mean, I went to boarding school, school when I was six. So, you had to participate in everything, tennis, um, uh, everything, life-saving, um, uh, by Athlon, music. Um, so, so, I get, and folk dancing. And I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very diverse culture. And I think that is mm. for me, what makes South Africa so interesting is, is the immense diversity that there is. And I've only realized um, in, in when I went to Paris, um, and I and I saw, I think a lot of countries with a lot of red tape, um, uh, it's limiting, and that is for me. Um, we've got lots of sunshine, we've got lots of energy in South Africa, and um, there's there's so much talent here um, that we must just find a way how to how to access it and bring it to the fore. And we'll 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 talk a bit about Paris just now, um, but I mean. You spoke about when you were also primary school, when you were five or six. Did you always know, even when you were at, um, at a young age, that you were going to become an artist? I mean, was that always your dream? My mother always tells the story when she took me for um, schools, um, but you, you call it school of um, school creativity. Um, she said that um, the lady was very impressed because I, I draw a tree and the the water was going from the roots up, up, up to the to the leaves, and um, and my my grandmother um, was a big weaver, and my grandfather's um, sister was married to Erich Meyer. So I, I I grew up, you know, like spinning and weaving mm. and uh, handcraft. So, um, so so yeah, so I think it's it's uh, and ballet. I mean, ballet is very theatrical. Um, we used to, my mother, we used to sit always in row, row A, right in the middle. So the orchestra was here. You could see the sequences spinning off the ballerinas. And um, there's also a, a way of theatric, theatricality. And I mean, the Sunday Plessis Theatre in those years, um, it, 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 was, it was very inspiring for me. So it's always been in your blood. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, art is in your DNA, if we can say. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and fire. <laughs> <laughs> and farming at the same time, because a lot of that subject matter also comes through, through your work and, um, as well. Just share with us, Pauline, a bit of your um, what what it meant to be in Paris and to be on a on a um, international residency. For me, I take I take it daily as it as it goes. Um, so, um, I mean, I realized that you do get a museum card, and um, there was there's lots of opportunities, and it's very um, it's a very free how you wanna how you wanna. 
um, go through your journey there. Um, but what was interesting is that there's so many artists there. There's 320 artists, writers, musicians, and... And let me just come in. That, that was at the Cité, because while you were in Paris for your six months, you were accommodated at the Cité International des Arts. And that's where all the art, so it was very much a cosmopolitan of artists and everyone from around the world that was staying there at that time. Yes. And it was interesting because I started a, a collaboration with a girl, Simon. Um, she's got the group in, in Paris. They still, I'm still part of the, the group there. And um, Francis van der contacted me. So I started lithography with him. So we first um, did the um, Don Quixote um, print there, um, which is now included in the Victoria and the v &A collection in London. And um, so, yeah, and, and then after I just wanted to keep staying on in Paris, so I did the residency in the south of, um, uh, in, uh, at the Grand Village. The Grand Village is at Francis van der Ritz, that's his residency there. Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. And just also just share a bit, of, a bit of your journey with Francis as well with us, please. Um, it, was, it's, it was very interesting. He contacted me and it was a, a gallery studio space that was quite out in the outskirts. So, I mean, when you work with, especially printmaking, um, it's, a, it's a joint collaboration, you know, like you can't... Uh, so, um, so you have to test if your personalities um, align and stuff. So, um, and it was very inspiring for me because um, I wasn't aware. I mean, we did lith stone lithography. I mean, that's that's what I specialize in. I love the materiality of it, and um, so I learned a lot of when 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 we were students, we were only allowed to, to use crayon, and then I I discovered so much more about lithography. And um, I think also I did want it to become a sculpture before I became a painter, or, or I specialized in painting though. But um, so, so it's, always, it's always been every medium. I mean, if you've got an idea, um, there's different ways of expressing what you want to say. I work with metaphors. So sometimes you want to use video because you have sound and you've got moving images and installation we we actually involve the viewer in the experience um and and i, I mean charcoal charcoal drawing is one of my favorite 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 things um and yeah so it's how can i say the one feels the other um you know like the way the things that i learn in lithography always um comes over to my painting or my thinking processes. Um, Do you have a medium that you would go back to all the time as your base medium or, um, that, that where you find the most inspiration and that you know is really close to your heart or is it you comfortable across all, all the different mediums that you, that you um, work in? No, definitely all the different mediums, they feel each other. Um, I, um, you know, like your drawing always inspires you and it, and it helps you to figure out um, different marks because um, for me, um, what I really focus on is, is, is my mark and the mark becomes the, um, the, the metaphor of, of, of the layering um, and the work is in flux. So there's always this movement of the viewer coming in and out um, of into the picture um, yeah and it's a it's it's when I was still living in Bloemfontein um, I'm now yeah I'm a research associate there, so at the university yes yes okay. okay so just just to to sit there and work um, you know I think the the problem uh, not the problem but nowadays people think you have to teach them something um, but um, when, you know, like, I think the best way to explore is to find your own way and to work through that. And I think there's a lot of, for any, for any young artist watching this, um, there's a lot of lessons learned in terms of looking at your career where 
we find with many artists, they become comfortable in maybe one medium, whether it's painting or sculpture or, as you say, um, printmaking. But they're not willing to actually explore other mediums. And yeah, you've taken, as the opportunity has arisen, to actually branch out into other mediums and find a voice across the different mediums, which I think has become you know, um, almost a benchmark in terms of having looked at your journey over the last few years and how you've been able to produce works of excellence across the different mediums as well. Every time, it's like exactly what you say, the moment you get into a comfort zone, you become so numb and you have mm. to constantly challenge yourself and you have to constantly um, learn and, um, and how can I say, yeah, um, it's just, it's a, it's a natural flow. So what, I mean, Pauline, what's your inspiration? What keeps you um, challenging yourself? What keeps you inspired and um, keeps you going forward? You know, the moment you, you talk about it, it, it disappears. It's just magic. I don't know. To live to the fullest, I think that is. And to <laughs> completely be yourself. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of fire in me, so I love I love. <laughs> movement and um yeah over the years that i've got to know you i mean you're extremely passionate about what you do i mean everything you do you you throw your whole self into it you commit yourself to every project that i've seen you undertake it's a hundred percent commitment yeah i mean i say yeah otherwise um if the energy doesn't flow you get stuck when we look at the art industry, we've always viewed as maybe your hubs being around Cape Town, Durban, I mean, sorry, not Durban, um, Cape Town and Joburg. Now, you based on a farm in, in the Free State, outside Bloemfontein. How do you keep abreast with what's happening on the art scene all the time? Um, I travel. I, I travel, um, um, keep, keep moving, keep moving. And, um, but at this stage, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very focused on my um, new solo exhibition that I'm working on um, for, the, for UJ. Um, so, so at this stage, I, um, I don't travel so much, but I travel more inwards and I travel more, um, spend time in nature and things like that. And at this stage, this is my biggest inspiration. Are you allowed to share with us a bit about this, the upcoming solo exhibition? Uh, are you allowed to give give our viewers a bit of a um, a, a few breadcrumbs for what they can look forward to, what um, what you're going to be working on, and when this you know when I know we are in uncertain times at the moment around COVID and that, but when that when would that be happening and so on? It will. Uh, it's scheduled second um, of after the university is open. So at this stage, um, the dates are unclear. But I'm sure as, as things unfold, because COVID, it's, um, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. The theme of the exhibition, are you able to share that with us? Or is that going to be a surprise? No, 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 of course. Um, it's, complete, it's, it's complete new works, but I think it's only, um, the title of the exhibition is um, Execution. And for me, the, the way I choose my titles from the first um, solo I had was Opslag. Um, which in, uh, if you if you translate it, it's like when you you plant a next and the wastage. Next year it comes up again, so you get that the opslag, and then you also get the opslag bullet. And I think it's it, it relates to a lot of what's happening in this country about um, you know like we have to enjoy every moment we have because. Um, Crime in this country is a big reality. Mm. Um, so, so, and and opslag. So, I, I like I like the double the the double meaning um, because for me, you know, like I use metaphors and the optics doesn't mean the same for everybody. Um, and that is for me. And sometimes it's just to ask questions. It's not necessary to make a statement. And um, the viewer can read every part that he wants to read in it completely different. So um, that's also been, um, you know, like you, you, throw, you, you throw a rock in the bush in the Afrikaans <laughs> state. 
quite flippity force, yeah. And see what comes out when you throw it. Yeah, but also, um, how can I say, I'm, I'm very curious. And um, when I work with portraits, um, I don't know, it's very intuitive. It's not it's not something that you can talk about. Or, I don't know. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Any last words that you would maybe want to share with us? I think to, to come back to the question about my, my next solo exhibition, um, it, it, I think it's a continuation of, of my work and um, it's, 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 it's becoming more of, I don't know, um, it's just like a continuation and some of the works, um, so it's the journey of my last three years that I undertook. So I did the Safka residency in France um, with, with Pierre Lombard and um, that was really inspiring because there were so many, um, I was working in charcoal the gallery was so pristine. Um, <clears throat> so I'm when I work, I work very messy. So um, so charcoal was really for me like a clean medium, and it also um, made me not feeling so precious about my works. You know, like um, it's it's a work on paper, and when I work on paintings, you need to stretch the can the canvases. I use flax linen because the difference between flax and um, how can I say um, uh, a cotton duck? It's um, it's the, the the fibers are much longer, so um, it's a very stronger canvas. And then I prepare it with rabbit skin glue, and I work with um, a lot of handmade um, artist oil, um, Michael Harding um, oils and pigments. And um, for me, painting is really a um, you know like about the materiality of of the things. Pauline, thank you very much and um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we wish you all success as you prepare um, towards your solo and we uh, look forward to seeing you um, at your opening in Johannesburg. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you Paul, it was a, it was a um, great pleasure and honour. To our viewers, thank you very much for joining us today on the Absol Art Hotspot. And um, I'm Dr. Paul Bayliss that was in discussions with Pauline Gutter, our 2013 Absolute Atelier winner.